Hello everyone, this is Heidi and I have a Neuroscience of Awareness blog. And today is a special video because I started this blog to explain some neuroscience concepts and I wanted to talk about the threshold where science ends in consciousness and the discussion on consciousness begins. And this is the first video where I'm gonna talk a little bit about my own personal experience. Uh, moving beyond the science. And it was really inspired by someone who came to me today and they said they pulled out a verse from the Bible, which is like that St. Paul's, uh, I do what I don't want to do. I do that thing that I find myself doing that I don't want to be doing. And that which I want to do, I don't do. And I'm paraphrasing the quote. But she pulled it out and she said, this is what you do. This is what you do. And, and we've been kind of examining this idea of honoring differences and caring connections in a lot more detail than I've been able to explain on this blog. Um, but at the heart of neurobiology, when you get to the ninth domain, uh, where you're integrating all other eighth domains of integration, you see people with a higher state of altruism and a feeling of connectedness with all of life. I've defined this as having a sweep loop level of awareness, where 50% of your awareness is in that plane of possibility, and 50% of your awareness is in that peaks of activation where the words are, so I've defined it that way. There have been other ways I've talked about how you can cultivate interoception or body awareness through like a body scan or the will of awareness practice. And when you do that, it grows your spindle neurons, how spindle neurons, also called von Economo neurons, how they combined with the ACC and the insula seem to allow self-awareness to arise. So these are sort of science terms uh, for a description of a quality of consciousness that a person can cultivate. Uh, but of course, there's only so much that science can measure. And just my personal experience is that there's actually a resonant field. Um, I experience it like when I'm working with clients and we call, we create what's called a superhero team or a circle of support so that people can feel I've been calling it the map maker. Uh, one, one scientist calls it a resonant self witness. It's just, we have an inner critical voice, which I've called the default mode network that's harsh. And then we have this other part of our brain that can cultivate empathy and a witnessing presence. And I'm just calling that the map maker right now. So when we make a map of my mind, I have insight. And when I make a map of your mind, I have empathy. And those are called mind maps. And when I have a map of us, that's called morality. So this is kind of mind mapping. And uh, mindful awareness practice, which is the wheel of awareness, that's called a map. So when I call a map maker, um, that would be the part of us that's able to feel empathy and compassion that has this sweep loop. Um, that has more spindle neurons, and that there's a certain resonance. And there, are, when we go beyond the idea of just science, you know, people might label this as your soul, your essence, uh, who you are. Uh, there's your phys physical body, then there's an energetic body. Some people have called it your spiritual body. So there's different words. Uh, it doesn't really matter to me what the words are. What does matter uh, in, in terms of this blog is that it be named and that it, that it be known that it's included as part of this ongoing blog that I'm creating and that I want to see if we can have people from different faiths and no faith talk about what this quality of resonance is like and how it affects like quality of life. So that's, that's really why I want to bring it into the picture. And what I was saying is that I, there's a feeling that happens when I'm bringing in people's superhero teams. And I, and I asked, do you have a faith community? Do you have a place in nature? 
um, something that you call upon that gives you support that you see as a resource and when people have um, an inner sense of knowing of something and we call it into the room there's there's a resonance there's like an energy that echoes in the room so this is this is my first attempt at bringing it up i've been endlessly fascinated in, in about this subject starting uh, in my teens i worked at a bookstore and i read like every book that was like on spirituality mute message down under um just i could probably name hundreds of them i've read um byron katie's uh the work and uh, there's just tons of stuff, uh, Celestine Prophecy, and I mean, it goes on and on, Eckhart Tolle, those are all kind of spiritual angles, and then, you know, I've, I've been to lots of different faith communities um, consistently and been a part of them, and uh, beyond all that, uh, for those who don't know, I was married, and my husband had a brain tumor, and he passed away in 2009, and in Buddhism, it's often said that if you want to get enlightened to meditate on death, and I was, I was doing a lot of prayer and just different types of practices pretty intensely before I met my husband. And I was really like in a place where I was like, make me an instrument of your peace. And, and there was an inner sense of knowing. Uh, so we can call this intuition or insight uh, in, in the nine functions of the prefrontal cortex when I met him and he told me that people meet for a reason, a season or a lifetime. And I said to him jokingly on the phone, uh, I wonder what the reason is why we met. <laughs> and, uh, and then we had a journey together for three years and the, the neurosurgeon could not believe that he lived as long as he did. We, we fought real hard with that brain tumor. He did lots of wheatgrass juice. Uh, but it was an intense journey, and I learned a lot in those three years and after really looking at what it means to die, like looking at it every day and having conversations about it. And it was extremely intense. Uh, so that was, he passed away in 2009. And, and since then, I, I have, I met a person, his name is Dave O'Shauna. Um, he has, I would call him a special person. I'm kind of trying to get over labels. I just, um, and through kind of being involved with an energy that's around that, I've definitely had more integration in my own life and felt drawn to these models that I'm sharing with you all. Uh, the model of Firestone's defense mechanisms, uh, the squid, uh, to talk about when people are really inward or highly defended, what's going on, like at a more unconscious level. Uh, that theory, uh, I've added that in addition to kind of the interpersonal neurobiology idea of how we all exist on the spectrum from low integration to high integration. That's the framework. And then finally, I've added some of nonviolent communication because that's just a way to speak with the higher intelligence of our map maker. I've also called it like the writer, the writer versus the elephant. And I've also called it the medial prefrontal cortex or the pilot of your life uh, versus the limbic brain. So I'm kind of bouncing around with different um, brain names and metaphors. And again, my aim is to get to a resonance underneath. So that's just a whole background on me, where I'm coming from, and where I plan to go, um, bringing in the subject of consciousness. So if you wanna join me in this blog, feel free to share uh, what you wanna share about your experience of consciousness and, and what that resonance is like for you. So thanks, sir. Thanks for listening. Please, please share.